Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to the Monday Drive. We are here again with a special series of all of our mission partners. And so uh, this week we get to meet our mission partners, uh, Sergio and Holly from Impacto Latino. They serve in Mexico. And I can't wait for you guys to just to hear about what they do and how they're planning churches and doing uh, some cool things in Mexico as well as uh, Central America. So welcome to the podcast. How are you Thank guys you. doing? Very good. Yeah. Very excited. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, awesome. I'd love to just start out, give us a little intro of who are you guys, uh, where are you guys from, um, what do you guys do at Impacto Latino, what is that all about? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I was born in Mexico City, and um, my wife's family, her, her parents, moved to Mexico as missionaries, and they planted churches there, and I was able to get to know about Jesus because of their work. Oh, wow. And I was 16 years old and um, I accepted Jesus. And a few months later, I, I, I felt the, the call from Jesus to mm. also uh, dedicate my, my life to full-time ministry. Mm. And that's what I, I did. So right now um, we are planting churches in central Mexico uh, and also in the south part right now. We have a church there in, in Merida, in Yucatan. Uh, close to Cancun, for yep. those that yeah, I, so I know many ge- people. Geography, we got that. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know many people know yep. about Cancun, yep. so uh, about three hours from Cancun, okay. and uh, we have a church there. So what we do basically is uh, we recruit church planters, we train them, we offer funding for the first five years yeah. of the, the church plant. We also coach them. And, and we are basically creating a network of churches that plant churches. I love it. Yeah. Anything uh, you want to add to that kind of rundown? Well, we I think we've always kind of had a heart for missions, probably because what he just mentioned, just growing up, just seeing um, ministry and seeing how, uh, just having a heart for reaching out to others. So um, when we got married, we were... Um, we knew God had called us to go out and and be part of ministry, but um, I think we were very open as far as what that would look like and mm. what that meant for our lives. And so just praying and doing a lot of one of the things that we did that I know a lot of people here have the opportunity to do is go to different places yeah. and just kind of have an experience. Yep. And so even though we had worked, obviously, and lived in Mexico, we went back a summer during college. And so that summer kind of created that calling and kind of uh, the call to our heart as far as going back. You know, we, we need to come back. We need to do church planting here. And so I think that's one of the things that really um, pulled our hearts is having that experience. And so I would encourage anyone to just do that. If you have the opportunity to visit, to go to places, to just see what God is doing around the world or even close to you, just to do that. Because that's one of the things that really just um, pulled on our heart is being able to kind of do that again and see where God was leading us. That's awesome. So tell us a little bit about your family. You guys got some kids. Yeah. Tell us about them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we have three kids. Uh, the oldest is 16. Um, it's Abby, and then it's Emily, and she'll be 15 this Saturday. And then Eric uh, will be 12 at the end of the month. So, yeah. yeah That's they're, awesome. They're right now on, in a online school, so they're in a Christian online school in Mexico. So they're they're pretty much bilingual. They speak Spanish, English, Love it. most school English. So, yeah. Love it. And the town that you guys are specifically in is Caretaro, is that Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, geography-wise, that's a couple hours north of Mexico City. Is that correct? About three hours north of Mexico City. Yeah. So we're all, get your maps out, people. (laughs) Three hours north. Got it. Okay. Caretaro. And that, you you guys told me about that city. So I got to visit you guys, but you guys told me that's kind of a a city that's more technologically advanced. I mean, it's, it's kind of, um, you guys told me a line that like, if it can happen in Caretero, it can happen other places, like that kind of thing. Tell yeah. us about the city kind of makeup. What, what's that city like? Yeah, ba- basically it's, uh, right now is the fastest growing city in, in the whole country, oh, wow. country. And that's basically because there's many companies from the US, from Korea, from many places, setting their, their home base there in, in that city in Caretero. So it's growing, many people coming from all over the, the country and outside the country. 
And um, they say that there's six families each day moving to, to wow. this, this city. And um, so w one of the strategies that we, we were implementing is that if we make it there in that city, mm -hmm. right, planting churches, yep. uh, it, it, we can replicate that anywhere. anywhere yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It gives us a good picture because I think sometimes um, we don't mean to do this on purpose, but I think when we think missions, I think a lot of times in the Western American church, we think kind of rural or Africa or the, but you guys are in a different context. It's not rural, it's city, it, it's yeah. big city. And so you guys are meeting them day to day in their daily grind of life. I mean, these people are working, these people are getting after it. It's, it's not the rural kind of maybe what you would picture. So I think it's right. good for our people just to get a picture of what you guys are doing. Um, as you guys are doing that, so you guys are in Mexico, you guys went through COVID just like all of us, the whole world. Um, you guys have your own challenges, just being on the mission field and planning churches is hard, hard, hard. What, what are some challenges that you guys have, have walked through over the last couple of years? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, right now, af after COVID, uh, we have seen a lot of uh, discouragement. Uh, pastors that were like very excited and had churches, thriving churches uh, that basically lost everything uh, at some point. Some of them even had family members mm. die, you, you know. And so they, they are very discouraged. Mm. And that's one of the challenges. Um, you see seeing them um, trying to figure out how to navigate the new normal, right? Mm -hmm. And um, some of them uh, lost many members, and, and some of them are also trying to figure out what to do next. And, and, and we're trying to help them also on, on yeah. that context. Yeah. yeah. I would say just also just for the local churches, the church plants, uh, one thing they were uh, realizing just how many divorces mm. that happened during COVID, mm. just because the family was put into a setting where they weren't used to being where either the man and you know husband and wife came back and they were in, at the house all day together and they weren't used to that. Wow. Or even for those that were Christian, they were just in a situation that they weren't capable of dealing with. And then just the church, they also lost contact with a lot of the church. You know, if they stopped going to church and if there wasn't discipleship, um, that affected families. So I think one of the things that we've tried to work with them lately just to help them overcome is how you're doing discipleship. Mm -hmm. And are you really engaging with them, doing a uh, relationship with them and um, going with them, living with them, you know, going step by step. So I think that was one of the harder things on a local level that the pastors were dealing with yep. and just trying to engage with them and help them through that. Yeah. yeah. And so what about, what about you guys specifically? I think you guys just planted the church yourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Are leading that. And so, not only do you raise up and send out church planners, you guys just started one um, yeah. in a in a post COVID, if we can call that world, um, end of COVID. Mm -hmm. what, what what's that been like for you guys? What are your own challenges that you guys have personally faced? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, right now, um, everything's going up. The prices. I'm mm. talking about prices. Yep. Uh, one of the challenges is to find a place where we can meet that is um, uh, affordable. Mm. You know. And uh, that's one of the, the challenges. Also, um, probably being in the big city is, mm -hmm. is it's, it is one of the bigger challenges because we, we push a lot for them being in, in a place where people can get to easily in public transport. Mm -hmm. And so it has to be accessible. Yep. And if they're hidden you know, somewhere where it's hard to get, then the people can't get there. And so just finding a place that's affordable is, yeah. is hard. Mm. Yeah. Like you mentioned before, the, our, our context is um, urban, yep. right? And basically, almost ninety percent of Mexico and Mexico population live in, in urban settings. Yep. So uh, we need to make sure they they like Holly said they can get to the building, they can get to their houses where we are having small groups. So that that has been a challenge, and um, also many people. Um, kind of got used to uh, watching, uh, mm, you know, on streams, Sunday, yeah. streams. Yeah. And uh, so uh, even though they have the need, they have the, um, the desire sometimes to, to be in a community, 
they are also comfortable in their houses yeah. watching a stream or, or a video. Yeah. So we basically decided to to stop doing that uh, and for a, for a while, so people can actually come back and, yeah. and, and have community. Yeah. So one of the things that last year at I, I guess it was March. We started kind of like the online church and all that. We were leading kind of that team. Mm -hmm. And it was going pretty good because everyone was kind of used to COVID and streaming and a lot of things that were going on. Uh, we had um, kind of a crisis kind of with some of the families that were on our team and then decided that we needed to focus more locally. And so we handed uh, the team over to a couple that was – actually on our team, but cool. they decided to be like the local pastors there. And so we're on their team now. We kind of switched roles because we had to do cool. some more things with, with Impacto as far as um, doing discipleship and and uh, mentoring and coaching and training and all that and kind of refocus. But we're still on that team. Yeah. And that church officially um, got to their local site in September. Of last year, and um, now they're—I'd say we're up to about fifty. We started with about twelve people cool. locally, and now we're up to about fifty people. So that's exciting. That's awesome. Just to see the outreach there. Yeah, I love it. What What would you guys say? Like in the next three to five years, what are you guys asking God for? What are you hoping for? What do you dream of? Mm -hmm. what, what do you hope happens? Um, our training and coaching has been growing uh, outside our our network. And we had been serving other pastors. Like, mm -hmm. like I said at, at the beginning, um, we see the need. Pastors are discouraged. Yeah. Are, they are in need of community themselves. Yeah. Uh, so we, we are praying and asking God to open doors to other uh, movements. And even uh, and we had been able to, to do it some, some, somewhat in, in, somehow in Mexico. And also, uh, right now, we're training a, a group of pastors from, all, all, like, some of them are in Hispanic churches here in the States, oh, uh, cool. in Chicago, yeah. and, and also uh, in Spain, and Peru, and Chile. Wow. Uh, we just started a training for the, for them. And we're praying for, uh, if, it, if it's God's, God's will, uh, that we can uh, uh, actually increase that outreach to and serve wow. these pastors. So that's awesome, yeah. man! Not just Mexico, not just Central America, South America, Europe, America. No, I love that. That's awesome to see stuff expanding and, and you guys being able to have more influence. What What have you guys seen, uh, kind of along those lines? What What are some of the God wins? What have you seen God do and show up? What's life change look like? What, what's that been? What's been going on in that realm for you guys? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, this last year, uh, we were able to plant uh, two more churches, and that's a big win. Um, after COVID, we planted a church during COVID, so that, mm -hmm. and that church is thriving right now. They're having 140, more or less, you know, Andy and BTS, yeah, and, and, and they are very excited about that, that growth. They, they actually need a, a new building because... That the building they have now, it's not enough anymore. So they oh, they awesome. will be moving. Um, also, um, just seeing pastors uh, being refreshed and and excited again mm. about ministry, that's a big win, big really big win because yeah. that touches personally my heart because just by seeing them and and, and listening to their testimonies and saying. Um, now I want to do ministry again. Yeah, that's a big win. I think wow. it's various tiers because uh, we have our local church, and so obviously we're doing a lot of dis discipleship one on one, and so even being able to, um, I was able to uh, baptize and disciple um, a recently divorced um, lady with two two girls, and she just just to see her change because she was going kind of through all that. And um, just to see her life change and how, you know, right now it's been like three months since she accepted the Lord and has gone through that. And um, just to see kind of her reaction as to, oh, does the Bible really say that? Oh, what am I supposed to do here? Yeah. So just to see that and her, her change. But then we also have like kind of what God is doing uh, with the pastors and with the church planters and kind of their calling. Uh, we have uh, a younger couple that, 
they want to plant a church, but they're probably two, three years. That'll be like two, three years down the road. We're still um, working working with them yeah. uh, on that and trying to just disciple them through that and see what they need as far as do they need more Bible teaching? Do they need more yeah. um, just how to... For him, you know, how to talk in front of people, how to do discipleship, you know, how to do past, what does pastoring others mean? And so working with them and just seeing their calling um, and how God is working with that in them has been really uh, good to see. He was actually in our youth group when we were a few years back and he kind of had a falling out and now he's coming back and he's like, no, God's calling me to do this. So that's been really interesting and good to see. I love that. So if, uh, if our church is listening and they're saying, man, I love like the idea of this. I love church planning. I love like what you guys are going after. How can they get involved? How can they get engaged with what you guys are doing, both with maybe going over there as well as even back here? How can they get involved in what you guys are doing? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean, prayer is always needed, right? And, uh, and, and the best way to get our updates, uh, you, you guys can go to impactolatino.org and uh, sign up for, for our updates, and uh, we will be sending some. And um, also uh, Facebook, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, definitely, if you guys want to come down and visit us, we, we do all kinds of work. Uh, we do construction work, um, sports camps, yeah. um, you know, BBSs, uh, cooking classes. Yeah, pretty much anything <laughs> and everything we've done. So nothing scares us. And we've worked with children and youth. Uh, we've had even like an older group of ladies that had come down to cooking classes and cool. and different things. So we kind of work with uh, uh, like in this case, Riverside would kind of sign a group up, group up and uh, we'll work with you guys to try to figure what that looks and what your abilities and your gifts are and then try to make that mesh with what's going on there and, and making that happen. Yeah. yeah. So if, if a group comes down, are you going to make them eat crickets like I had to do when I was down? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have to try them. <laughs> you got to try the crickets and you got to try, what are those empanada things that we had the one the time? pastes. Pastes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. They're those good. things are so good. I could eat yeah. 22 of those yeah. things. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you guys so much for sharing um, with us. Thank you for being here uh, this week for Missions nice. Week, but also thank just you. sharing with our team. Yeah. And uh, look forward to hanging out with you guys more. Y'all tune in next week uh, for uh, Monday Drive with our another mission partner. Take care.